Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state that nearly 14 billion years ago expansion started. Wait, the earth began to cool, the autotrophs began to drool, Neanderthals developed tools, we built a wall. We built the pyramids, math, science, history, unraveling the mystery, and it all started with the Big Bang. A derivative is the slope of a tangent line in the graph of a function, and it is the result of a limit. Therefore, when there is no limit, the function won't be derivable. We could represent the derivatives in the next function. Derivatives are often credited to Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leminski since they developed the fundamental theorem of the calculus in the 17th century. However, Newton's work would not have been possible without the help of Isaac Borrow, who began researching and developing the derivative since 16th century. Now, even though the definition of derivative is rather abstract, the fields of simplification are extremely diverse. You may find the practice and utilization of the derivatives in fields such as chemistry, mathematics, physics, and engineering. In economics are instructed as an essential part of quantitative finance program or curriculum, and it is constantly traded across financial markets by economic agents. Also, they help us to calculate marginal cost. This means that the change of ratio is found when a unit is added to the total. But if marginal cost is defined, then the concept will say that it consists in the additional cost that results of the production of additional units in a product service. Calculus has spread throughout the areas of science, especially physics, for which Isaac Newton invented it to begin with. Many physical quantities are derivatives of other quantities which are average speed, instantaneous speed, and acceleration. In average speed, it is used to calculate the velocity or slowness of an object between two moments, and usually the average speed represents the average variation rate of the function where it is required. Then, in instantaneous speed, it is used to find velocity in a determinate moment, and in acceleration to find it in a specific moment. Engineering is defined by the Stanford University as a profession in which, in which knowledge of the mathematical and natural science gained by the study, experience, and practice is applied by the judgment to develop ways to utilize economically the materials and force of the natural of the benefit and the mankind. Many aspects of civil engineering require the use of calculus, and it is used to study technical affairs of the branch that you study. Here is applied physics and more inclined into a theoretical way. Primarily, a derivation example is the basic fluid mechanics equation, using all hydraulics analysis programs. In hydrology, the volume is calculated as the in the areas under a curve of a flow, of flow versus time. Engineers accomplish this by using calculus in this case the derivatives, and in mechanical engineering and aerospace engineering are other examples of how derivatives are used in this field. In an easier way, derivatives will be used to get variation for the same aspects that is used in physics, but with the difference that it will consider more variables that could affect our results. Now, if we observe derivatives with a different perspective, it can also be defined as the rate of a change of a function with respect to a variable. But what is the rate of change? It consists in the description of how quantities change in relation to each other. It is expressed as the ratio between the change of one variable related to the change of another variable. There are three types of rate of change. The first one is the negative, and it's when the value of x increases and the value of y decreases. Therefore, the graph slants downwards. The second type of rate of change is zero, and it's when the value of x increases and the value of y remains constant. That is, there is no change in y value and the graph remains horizontal. Like this. The third type of rate of change is positive, and it's when the value of x and y increases. Therefore, the graph slants upward. Like this. First, we are going to explain an example of rate of change in a range. First, we have this table with, which gives us the time that a person travels and the distance. To get the rate of change average, you need the change of distance by the change of time. To get a change, the change of distance, we use these two values. 
to get it. And then we use these other two values. The dark time. Yeah. We need to do the subtraction of 160 minus 80. That leaves you 80. And next to it, we need to do 4 minus 2, leaving you 2. We simplify the equation and it gives you 40 over 1. Now we can do the result of that, the p equals 40, and this is the final result of the rate of change in our edge. For the example, for instance, any rate of change, we have f of x equals x squared minus 2 when x equals 4. Well, we have the uh, formula we showed you before, which is this one. Um, to solve this uh, equation, equation, we have to use this table. And I divided it into five parts, so that it can be easy for you to solve it. Uh, the first uh, part of the table is minus 0.2, minus 0.1, 0.1, and 0.2. These values will be the same always. Then, for the second part of the table, uh, we put the value e of c, which is the value that gives you x in here, which is 4 plus the value here, which is three, which gives you 3.8. Here will be 4 plus minus 0.1, 4 plus 0.1, and 4 plus 0.2. Then you will put the value that gives you here into the function that gives that you have at the beginning and it gives you to in the first one 12.44 because it's 3.8 squared minus 2 and you do the same one, the same procedure for the rest of the values. Then you go to the next <laughs> to the next part of the table and you need to subtract the values we got here minus the value of 4 into the function which gives you 14 <laughs> which is in, and it's going to be for the first one it's going to be 12.44 minus 14 gives you minus 1.56 you're going to do the same procedure for all the values then you're going to take these values and you're going to divide them by the value you have in here. For the first uh, exercise, you're going to take minus 1 with 0.56 divided by minus 0.2 and it gives you 7.8. You're going to do the same procedure for all the values and as you can see, these values, the first two values, are going to number eight, and this one, is, and the other two values are going to number eight too, which gives you the result that the rate of change for this um, function is eight. Understanding the definition of derivatives being so vast and abstract, people from different fields such as business, mathematics, engineering, physics, biology, economics, chemistry, among others, have managed to provide the world a specialized definition for each specific field and or situation. Despite the situation, derivatives are used to measure how much something is actually changing. Knowing them and learning how to apply them in everyday life can be a crucial part of any profession since they take a huge part the third type of rate of change is positive, and it's when the value of x increases and the y. Gracias.